Hello and welcome to Terrain Oddity. My name is Jay and today I'm going to be showing you how to turn something like this, a can of expanding foam, uh, which only costs a couple of pound um, in the UK, a couple of dollars in the US I imagine, into what is essentially a really, uh, it's it's basic, but it's a really decent looking wargaming hill. Like it's, I wouldn't be displeased if I was playing on a table of terrain that had hills that looked like that. Um, not that I'm trying to big up my own work, but we turn spray foam into a hill and it's pretty decent. Um, and um, before we start talking about it though, if at the end of this video you like the video, do press like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that as that is really going to help. Um, and you can also consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link in the description if you want to see more terrain videos. Um, but why are we even doing this, right? Most terrain is actually like hills and stuff like that. And normally made out of ex um, extruded polystyrene, blue foam, pink foam, that kind of stuff. You might be able to get away with using polystyrene. We'll probably cover that at a different point of view. Um, but for those people, sometimes you can't get a hold of that, whereas you can get a hold of an, a can of expanding foam. And uh, they're only they're not very expensive, only a couple of pounds, especially like budget stores. Uh, and if you can get a hold of this instead of that, uh, well, you might you can make hills out of them. So we're gonna do we're gonna do that. Now I am aware that Mel the Terrain Chew pretty much who's done everything. I'll try and uh, you'll be able to find his video, but he's done a video on uh, spray hill. But the reason I'm doing mine is a couple of different things that I want to talk about that I don't think he necessarily mentioned in his. Um, and hopefully I can you know provide a little bit of different information. That's all. That's all. You can go check out his video though. It's very popular, so you should probably go and watch it. Um, but yeah, we'll get on with how we do it. I've got. A, cool video of it expanding so we'll, I'll show you that. So with a tin of expanding foam you would be able to absolutely get a, a shed ton of hills if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that here because I don't have the space in my room uh, to do it and um, just keep in mind though that you would be able to get quite a lot if, if you if you, you know if you were trying to make hills. Um, I'm using this kind of spray foam. No, I think I got this one from b and It cost me about eight pound actually. Um, now the one thing I would try and say is when you're spraying it, keep in mind you don't want to have any gaps, right? So one thing I was noticing when I was doing my uh, hills is I was getting cavities either well, generally in the middle of it. Um, and I don't know if it was the way I was spraying it or what have you, but essentially I tried to keep them low. Um, because they're going to expand anyway, so I only did like one thick one layer and made sure it was like completely coated everywhere. Um, and then if you do want to make like a, a ledge on your hills, just maybe do a little extra spray on the top. Um, you don't have to do that, but just keep that in mind. Because what will happen with these um, with this stuff is that it, it sort of like warps itself. Um, the middle bolts for the bottom it bolts out so you end up with a base that's sort of like concave or convex whichever one it is and um, basically the bottom of it is it's lower than the edges the edges are curving up um, and at the top um, like right in the very center because of the way that it just is made I think sometimes you get quite big holes in the foam depending on how you sprayed it etc so just keep that in mind um, oh you know give it a few test runs it doesn't take very long to dry maybe like 10 15 minutes but you want to make sure that it's all firmed up i would say just you know just reading what it says on the can um but yeah once it, it will expand it expands from the can it, it might the can might say something like 20 to 30 times but obviously that's because it's in like liquid form in the can and then when it comes out of the can it is it's already expanded and then it's going to expand some more and that will take a little while but um you know just keep that in mind um, and then, you know, once it's all dried, and as I said, it doesn't take very long at all, I I'd possibly leave it a couple of hours though, just to make sure it is dry. Um, you just take your hill and uh, you want like a very like long sharp knife. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the uh, the crust of the foam. Now the you could, if you want to, um, on the bottom of it, you'll see, you'll notice as I said, it like balloons out a little bit. Um, I would suggest just getting a knife and flattening that out. You could sand that out if you like. But um, what I actually did was just push it back into the foam uh, because the reality is there's gaps and stuff like that. So I actually just pushed the foam back into itself, if that makes any sense, which it probably doesn't. Um, and then what we're going to do is say we're going to take off the shell of the hill. And what you want to do here is you want to just take off as, as, as little as the shell as possible, but making sure you get all the shell. So what I'm saying there is you don't want to make like big brass like big bold cuts to get the shell off the little hard crusty bit you want to just take it off as much or as, like, as little as you can revealing the foam underneath and the reason for that is if you start cutting too deep 
you'll possibly start noticing that there's more and more crevices and holes in the middle. Now these holes, which you'll see, aren't necessarily a huge problem because we're going to fill them up either using a bit of foam or a bit of filler, but just keep that in mind. So what you want to do is take off your crust like as little as possible, but as much, but obviously you want to cover as much of the foam or the crust as you can. Um, and once we've done that, then we're literally just going to carve um, the shape of the hill. You could design the shape. I'm just going to use a natural shape that it's already formed to. And um, for the actual rock face, we are of course going to do the classic like zigzag um, triangles um, just making the rocks look as rocky as possible. Carving rocks, I guess it's hard to describe. Hopefully the video will do a better job than I am. Uh, but you basically want to make like, you want to slice it um, from one side uh, and then sort of slice it from the other side in a sort of triangular motion, which will give you these sort of uh, zigzaggy edge of rocks. Um, you could spend as little or as long as you want to designing your um, rock face. You can do like ledges if you want to do ledges. Um, try not to keep everything just pure sharp like triangular points. Sometimes you actually do want to do like a semi straight edge um, because it'll just look a little bit more natural to have a bit of variance. Um, but yeah, just keep triangular carving up um, the, the sides. Now for the holes, as I said, you can fill, but if you had a massive hole, what you could actually do would be get a bit of the foam that you've cut off and sort of scrunch it and shove it in. Because the reality is, um, the f when we cover this in filler or spackle in a minute, it'll stay there. But you know, you don't. If you've got a massive hole, then you might want to do a different bit of foam. But you know, if you've got uh, just little holes that you don't think the filler will cover, then feel free to put a bit of foam in and just squidge it in. And uh, that's pretty much it. Once you've done that, as I said, you can sand the bottom if you want to sand the bottom to try and make it flat because otherwise your edges can look a little bit raised. Um, I haven't spent too much too long doing that. I think Mel, when he did his, his, he actually put his on a base, so like an MDF base, and then he used the filler to blend it into the rock. I'm not doing that because I generally don't base my stuff like that, but um, keep in mind, you could do that. Um, covering it in filler is very easy. We're not even going to like water down the filler or anything like that. We're going to take it straight out the top. I believe this is possibly called... Uh, spackle in the US and um, yeah just whack it on <laughs> that's the phrase isn't it get it on your finger whack it on I would suggest having a tub of water next to it yourself just so you can smooth it out at the end but obviously here you want to cover all the holes so what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit of texture on the rocks and um, we're going to cover the holes everywhere else and even on the rocks you're going to notice that there are little holes just get a bigger amount of filler shove it in that hole um, once you've got filler everywhere get your finger with a bit of water on it and just move it off um, you want a bit of you don't want you're not trying to create a texture because there will be a texture there even if you try not to have a texture unless you spend ages with water on your fingers moving it off you're going to get some sort of texture so i suggest not to worry about texture um, do your first one and then see how you like it once you've painted it um, and once you've covered it in spackle or filler whatever you want to call it you're pretty much done right honestly for the building it I'm going to take some stones that I found in the garden and just hot glue them to the top for a little bit of variety. You don't necessarily have to do that, especially if you've, if you've created a more interesting looking hill. Um, once I've done that, I'm going to cover it in PVA and put some sand on top. This is all basic basing, isn't it? Um, once that's done, I'm going to um, spray it. Well, I actually sprayed it black. I suggest not spraying it black because it is foam and if you miss it anywhere, it'll melt the foam. So get black PVA, not black, get black paint and some PVA, mix them together and paint it. That'll seal in the the, the, uh, the sand as well. And once you've painted it black, I'm going to paint, I'm going to heavily dry brush the top brown, but I'm not really planning on showing that because um, I'm going to cover it in flock. Um, and then I'm going to he heavily dry brush the rocks in a dark grey. Then I'm going to use a lighter grey and then finally like a, a white um, subsequently getting less paint on the brush and obviously you're trying to catch the edges rather than the whole thing leaving sort of a bit of black in the recesses. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into dry brushing here but dry brush the rocks and also I sort of dry brushed the top of the rocks as it blends into the the brown bits and the little stones on top. You, you, you you could dry brush the top bit brown if you wanted, but I'm just using grey for speed. Uh, then I'm going to cover it again in PVA, uh, put on my um, blended turf from Woodland Scenics, and um, you know, you, you're pretty much done. Uh, seal that in with some watered down PVA, and uh, as I said, you are done. So, all in all, I think you know, if you can only have access to expanding foam, it it will make a lot of these hills if you need a table's worth of hills. It's not very expensive, and and yeah, I'll post, I'll try and post pictures as always. But the reality is, this looks fine. You know, uh, if I went to a tournament or an event and people, and they had a table worth of hills that just looked like that, I wouldn't think anything of it. I would think, oh, they're all right. 
do you know what I mean? They're all right. And I didn't spend very long carving this up. I didn't spend long painting it. I literally just whacked it on. This isn't, I won't be using this really. Um, I don't make these kind of hills. I use them with the uh, blue foam, but um, I, I'm, I'm pleased. Like when you consider the cost and the fact that if you don't have access to the blue foam, this is a very um, accessible alternative. Um, and I've got no qualms with it. It worked fine. As I said, um, the cavities, I've painted this black, but you, ooh, that's very weird. You might know I tried a bit of spray paint and it does melt the foam. Um, I did test it, but you'll notice there are cavities in the bottle. Like, look at that. That's a big, big cavity there. I've got my finger right in it. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. Imagine if I cut this, imagine I decided, oh, well, um, I didn't want, I shaped the hill. I wanted to have this, but it's very difficult to show you what I mean. Imagine I wanted to just cut this bottom bit off completely. Well, I would then soon get into this massive cavity here. So that's what I'm saying. When you cut off the shell, you don't, you, you really need to stick with the shape of the hill that you've sprayed because otherwise you're going to get massive cavities at places. And you can work around the cavities by using filler, etc. But the cavities I was having were so big that at one point I was like, this isn't even going to be possible. Um, so just keep that in mind that you want to just keep the you want to just take off the crust and cut into it as little as possible so that you don't hit anything massive like that now um a disclaimer your mileage may vary because of climate and the kind of spray foam that you buy uh, i would say just give it a test do wear safety precautions uh, take safety precautions in this glasses and gloves this stuff is very uh, what they call it caustic i don't think i necessarily use gloves um, but i should have done <laughs> and um it you know it's pressurized as well so it can be so it can not explode but i guess well it probably could explode but i, I you know just be careful with it is what i'm saying you don't want it in your eyes and you don't want it on your hands um acetone which is basically nail varnish remover um it's quite good to, ha to have a hand because if you get it if you do get it somewhere you're not you don't want it to be it sort of like melts it away and um, so do be cautious with it but yeah i mean it's fine it looks good to me that is a decent hill if you don't have access to blue foam that's a decent alternative um and reasonably cheap that's it pretty much um if you're interested in terrain of any kind well wargaming DD, &D, all that kind of stuff subscribe please for the love of my me no i'm not that would make any sense but yeah subscribe uh like and subscribe have a beautiful day and goodbye